Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair. And this is not like a remake of Pet Cemetery. Sometimes they come back, yeah, if you got that tagline. It's about this, so this was here, I made a video a week or so ago, I'm sure a lot of you saw the video, and it was working fine. I gave it back to the customer, he saw it was working fine, and after the weekend, it came back to me, he says it doesn't work, it's dead connected it to the battery and it's dead and I said well it was working so we connected it back up to my bench power supply and he's right it's dead so uh, sometimes they come back yeah but just before we look at this I want to mention something else which hasn't come back so I'm sure again a lot of you saw this repair this was the P2000 dot five sakio car amplifier which i repaired or rather i didn't repair i changed the sockets the audio input sockets because they asked me to do and one of them was loose it had been previously fixed so i did that it went back out to the customer and he said he had the same problem to which i replied well i did what you asked me to do yeah and we made a video about that so in the vehicle if the volume was low, it was okay. Once you turn it up to any appreciable amount, it would start distorting very badly on all speakers. So I had this back in the workshop, and on the second video, I tested this. I had a number of different jobs on the same day. I tested this. We connected a subwoofer and a couple of speakers, each one in bridge mode, so I'm using all of the amplifier channels. And I was driving this as hard as I can on my 10 amp bench power supply and I couldn't get it to distort so you guys saw that on video at least the ones of you who watched that video the customer came in I showed him this is working he agreed with me it's working there were a lot of comments on that video inside here are two power supplies which step the voltage up DC to DC converters basically and somebody commented he thought it was faulty and what he found is that often one of the two power supplies will fail in car amplifiers one's running one isn't and when you try to drive them at any large amount of power they fail or start to distort so thanks for that info i wasn't actually aware of that how they were connected up but in this case in actual fact that wasn't the cause of the problem and i was correct there was nothing wrong with this amplifier i suggested to the customer he checked the wiring on his van I also said just run another cable directly from the battery to the amplifier and make sure you've got a good ground and a couple of days later he sent me a whatsapp and said well done Richard and he sent me some pictures and I'm sure you guys would like to see them and this is what he sent me so this is the inline fuse holder from the battery to the amplifier okay Sakio you see the same brand on it yeah, that's what had happened to it. Another shot of it from a different angle with the fuse, okay. And this one. So that is what was causing the problem on the amplifier. I was correct, there was nothing wrong with it. The guy has now fixed the problem. I do hope he's fitted another fuse and not just connecting the thing straight to the battery. I haven't asked. <laughs> okay, I might mention that to him. But he says it's working. Okay, so that one didn't come back. But this one has. I've tried it myself, it definitely is dead. So let's get the back off this and let's have another loop to see what's happened to it. And why, it, effectively, he says it didn't work the first time he tried it. For those of you who didn't see the previous repair video on this one, the inverter basically has 10 switch mode power supplies 12 volts in two mosfets on each one so each one has a center tapped winding and the mosfet switch either end alternately 12 volts and ground and that's what generates the ac at very high frequency that then charges these 400 volt capacitors and then the mosfets here chop that up effectively at 50 hertz so 50 times a second they effectively connect the output in opposite directions across the capacitor. Okay, these are all in parallel. So that's how it basically works. We get 
50 hertz. It says in the manual modified sine wave, that means square, yeah. <laughs> That's a nice way to put it, modified sine wave output, okay. These, by the way, will be acting kind of like a, a bridge type circuit. That's how it will be doing it. So on either side of the bridge, you'll have a effectively a MOSFET that connects to the positive end of the capacitors and one that connects to the negative and it will switch them alternately so top one here bottom one here positive negative and then it goes top one here bottom one here positive negative and that effectively reverses the voltage on the wire and neutrals that's how it actually works you can see this one connects into this block of four and this goes over there okay so it's effectively like a bridge Anyway, the other thing I figured out is that some of this circuitry here, which is driving all this, is powered directly from the 12 volts here. So some of these ICs are, and some of the other ICs are fed via the on-off switch. Okay, the 12 volts via the on-off switch. And this MOSFET acts as a soft start. So when you switch the switch on, it effectively has like a little timer it takes a few seconds and once the timer times out the mosfet switches on it powers up the rest of the ic's and the thing fires up and that's what was wrong with it so effectively a faulty switch now i'm wondering although i changed the switch has the same thing happened again and if it has that begs the question why so let's see This is where the switch connects. No, the switch is okay. Yeah, the switch is okay now. I'm just switching the switch on and off. Sorry, a lot of reflection on there, guys. Okay. So the problem isn't the switch this time. Okay, well, we spent a lot of time on the previous video working out how the circuit functions. So I have some idea where to start with it. Let's just check all these fuses again. These are in the main 12 volt supply. Fuses are okay. So let's connect this up to my bench power supply again and let's have a look to see what voltages we have where. Well, actually, guys, I was just about to do that and I think I've noticed something. So this is the MOSFET I was talking about. And I think I have a bad connection or you think I can kind of wobble it here yeah you can probably tell if I'm moving it further back in fact I can feel it more than anything there's a bad connection here uh, I can feel it hard to see There, can you see that? Right, you can see it now wobbling, yeah? So, <laughs> that's what's wrong with it now. This may have happened possibly because I pushed this back a little bit when I was actually making the measurements I wanted. I was trying to trace where all the tracks go. So, this could actually be something that I've done. I could probably get some soldering on the top there but I think I probably need to do this properly and if I need to do that I get need to get this PCB out which is quite a job let's see so it's fairly obvious the legs of the device have actually fractured 
where they go into the PCB. Okay. I'll try and get under here. I have a blob of solder. Let's go for the next one. Okay. And the last one. I'll just pick out this piece of solder that went astray, you saw it, yeah? There. Of course it fell back inside, but I've got it out. And you know what, I'm still not happy with that, yeah. So I'm going to have to take this whole thing apart. I thought I might try to save myself the job, but you know, got to do it properly, yeah? Now I have the PCB out, it's a bit easier to see what's happening with this, okay? And you can see that those solder joints are just no good. So I'm going to unsolder this then. Let's see what we can do with it. Well, the MOSFET fell out and I think he fell out and left one of the pins in here okay yeah and we can see the problem now okay what is this thing irf9 z34n and here's the data sheet this is a p channel mosfet in fact, the IRF 9, or rather the 9 in the number, pretty much told me that anyway. Plus, I remember from the previous video as well. Well, you can tell it's P-type because I like minus 19 amps, yeah. I <laughs> always find that strange. We have a negative amps, but there you go, okay. This has an extremely low RDS on. And I don't actually have, in fact, I'm not even sure I've got any pretty much channel MOSFETs in this package anyway this TO220 yeah so in this case I'm going to try and repair the broken leg the other option if I had some sort of suitable replacement even something that is compatible because this effectively is just switching the power to the other ICs 12 volts I could have fitted that but I don't really have anything okay let's see if we can just fix this Okay, if I get this wrapped around as I just have done, so something like that, yeah, that's fairly tight on there. I mean, I can pick the device up with that. If I solder that onto the leg and then bend this, that should give me a nice rigid leg. This is just off an old resistor, which I have hundreds of these things. So, let's see. Uh, a little bit further forwards there. I think that's about the right place. Okay, yeah, something just like that, I think. Now let's just test this. Yep. Well, that looks okay now. It's not waggling around anymore. Let's see if this now powers up. Here goes. Yep, you hear it? Green lights on, okay. So it's powering up, I'll put this back together and then we'll just test it with a light bulb as a load again on the mains. But I'm confident actually this will be fine now. I've put it all back together, I've just made sure there's no shorts between any of the heat sinks and the chassis, that's all fine. So let's just power this up again. Yeah, it's running. So I'll just get my 10 amp power supply, I'll get a light bulb, I'll just stick on the output of this and make sure we have 220 volts coming out of it. 
Okay, I have a light bulb there, 72 watts. That will run happily enough on my 10 amp supply. This has a soft start, as I mentioned before, so it takes some seconds to actually boot up. So we'll switch it on. Green light on, you have to wait some seconds. There. Okay, so it's working. So to go back to the pet cemetery quote, sometimes they come back, yeah. And don't be surprised if they come back because it's all of your own doing. And I think that one was, I think that one was my fault in actual fact. But hey, I'm always straight with you guys. I hope you enjoyed that video. And I don't think this will come back again. Get to the comments below and let me know what you think. And I look forward to seeing you all soon again on Learn Electronics Repair. Ciao for now guys.